can feel it, but we can hear you clearly, and I it's hope that kind of. Uh, okay, okay, I can I can hear you clearly, and I hope that our viewers will bear with us. Uh, and on the comment section, I would want to encourage our viewers uh, to always drop your comment to give us uh, the update on um, on difficulties we are facing. Make sure. Uh, that you update us if you are listening to us clearly, if you are having difficulties in transmission or getting our our transmission, please indicate on the comment section because uh, we are here to serve you and we will make sure that uh, this program also aligns uh, with your thought. Uh, with us, once again, is uh, Barista Ifanye Jofo, and we'll be talking about series of issues uh, as we all know that the leader of uh, uh, IPOB, Mazin Namdekano, have been in detention unnecessarily detained, despite all the acquittals and the court judgment in his favor. But the Nigerian government, under the Buhari administration, past Buhari administration, uh, have continued to detain him illegally. And we also have the new administration who have also continued on the same uh, footstep. And uh, we know that the barrister... Uh, uh, if I Jofo have uh, stood in the gap uh, fighting this battle to make sure that our Ma uh, leader Mazin Namdekanu is, uh, is released from detention. And these are part of the reasons we are here to look at the human rights violation that is going on uh, in Nigeria. As you know, there are series of uh, detained activists in Nigeria, not just the leader of our IPOB Mazin Namdekanu. Recently, we also had uh, the protest. Uh, there was a protest that took place, and we saw how some of the protesters were also arrested and detained, and uh, being charged for uh, terrorism uh, and uh, charged for capital punishment. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, Wada, I don't know if you would be coming forward to make whatever. A contribution you want to make before we barrister the job to come in because uh, he's been having technical issues and I believe he has resolved that. What well, are there things you want to say? Because I heard you say something. No, no, no. I'm trying to remind you some words that went off your head. I was saying that they were charged with treason, uh, treasonable felony and others. Thank you very Can much. Thank you very much for that reminder. That is the right word. A treasonable felony for protest. And you know, so it becomes a thing of comedy for us that even when you now protest on the street, uh, you are charged with a treasonable felony. And it is part of the issues we'll be discussing today with uh, uh, Barrister uh, Ifanye Jofo. Uh, can you please bring Barrister on board because he's back to the studio? Barrister. Uh, we look. We are looking at the, the the issues of human rights violations in Nigeria, and we've seen recently that some protesters were charged for treasonable felony for protesting against uh, this present administration and protest against hunger, despite the fact that this protest was peaceful and cordial. What do you have to say about that? Well, um. What I want us to appreciate at this point, to understand at this point, is the fact that um, <coughs> Nigerian justice system is keen in such a manner that um, they are more on the side of gross violation of laws than protecting the law. Uh, just like what you are saying about um, any protesters on for offenses of civil felony and whatnot, these are people that actually apply for to be allowed to give permission to protect against the backdrop of the hunger, poverty, hunger, and hardship in the country. And this permission was granted. At the wee hours of the night before the date started for the, for the protest, they went to court and obtained a black market order, which I can call a black market order, to restrain them from protesting across certain places. And their protests were, by, that, by virtue of that order, limited to certain place, places. However, at the end of the exercise, some of them were arrested. Why those who lead the protest and probably who initiated it are still in the street today and they were arrested and arraigned for offense of tribal felony and all whatnot. So what I want to uh, what I want to understand is the fact that the challenge 
kind of a, a step, a political step, taken towards demoralizing people from embarking on further protest. It's a political step, kind of a wish hunt, taken to, to, towards demoralizing citizens from expressing their views, their divergent views, criticizing government policies and decisions. So that tomorrow, when you learn about those who are facing this kind of charge today, and you are called upon to come and protest, you will say, no, I won't protest because I will be arrested and arraigned for, for, for committing offense of the flooding. When the ingredients of this offense are not disclosed by virtue of that charge, I would mean, so they are not disclosed on the face of the charge. So this is what's sustainable in our system. If I, when, 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 when applied to, to what is happening in the Southeast, how people will be arrested and also charged for offenses of terrible felony or offenses of, um, uh, of, um, of uh, terrorist offenses. When you know that these people were not involved in these offenses, it's common in our places. We have them in their numbers today. Those who are like, or lucky to be arraigned in court, we have them. We have France who are today being detained at several, at, at, at several nation facilities of the French government. Who are being arraigned, who are arraigned for offenses of terrorism, terrible felonies, or, or, or kidnapping. When actually you know this people are not involved in these offenses. We call it political motivated charge. And at the end of the day, the government will, not, will be unable to establish these offenses. Just so mainly to detain these people for a period of time, and the courts, the courts will eventually allow them to go. So this is what's sustainable in our system. So, and you see people who committed, okay, like, like what happened a few days ago? Someone, a former governor was declared wanted. And the court consequently ordered for his arrest, then issued a, an open bench warrant against him. This man moved gently into the headquarters of EFCC, interacted with them, and he was asked to go. He was asked to go. The same EFCC that has been running up and down, shouting on top of the voices, granting press conferences, gone to court to tell the court that this man cannot be found, that they need order of court, and court granted that order. This man walked into a facility. And this is a man that has an order of court on his head. They should be arrested. And they asked him to go. The same night, they went to governor's lodge to look for the man. So that will tell you the mockery of the entire thing. It's the mockery of the system, the mockery of the democracy. So the, the system, the national judicial system or justice system, is skewed, is skewed towards favoring the political class. That can assure you. So this charge of freedom from preferred against protesters is political witch hunt. Is purposely done to discourage those who will embark on similar protests tomorrow. Thank you. Uh, what other jobist? I don't know if there is a question you have uh, for Barista. I, I pass the ball to you. All right. Thank you so much. As we are looking at the insight of um, constitutional human rights, Barista, we know that as Nigerians, but as Igbos in particular, that uh, we have been battling the power of a often uh, repressive uh, regime. And uh, we have these uh, biggest challenges of uh, human rights violations of the Igbo extracts, either by the government itself or by Nigerian security agencies or by ethnic bigots. Barista, I would want you to uh, enlighten us about what a 1999 uh, constitution as amended says about human rights. Thank you, Barista. I can get the question clear. It's um, The question is that Ndibo has been facing or battling repressive regime since the time of independence or let me say since after 1970 we have been facing repressive regime but our biggest challenge is the human rights violations of indibo either by the government or by these uh, security agencies or by ethnic bigots now i say can you enlighten us about what Nigerian constitution, 1999 constitution as amended, says about human rights in Nigeria? My, I'm having an issue articulating 
the questions uh, the questions um, you asked. I can't get you clearly. I was trying to get the point you are trying to make about um, violation of the rights of um, individuals, uh, which is extant uh, and it's common. It's a common phenomenon. So, uh, and um, what the law says, what the constitution says about those rights being violated. So I wanted to know the aspect of them. Right. Of course, if uh, okay, okay, okay. I Let want, me come in. This I, want, I want it to be limited. I want. I want aspect. to have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now you know we have suffered uh, uh, intimidations, discriminations, exclusions, but the the, the 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 most difficult one we are facing is the freedom of speech and movement. We can see people being arrested randomly in Nigeria, the Igbo residents, how they are being arrested, maybe they, they, their homes will be broken in or they will be arrested at checkpoints and they will be taken away. Why is it that we don't have that freedom of movement and speech? Thank you so much. I can now understand what I'm saying. Well, however, in answering this question, in my attempt to answer this question, freedom of movement is a constitutional guarantee right. Same is applicable to freedom of speech. Guarantee under under our relevant under the Eastern Constitution. I'll use my own personal, I'll use myself as an example in this, in this circumstance, in responding in answering this question. Sometime in June, two, my room was invaded at the wee hours of the night. Consequently, my PA was killed. I want you to listen carefully. I'm also discussing the judgment of the court in this matter. Because the judge has given the uh, God had granted uh, handed over handed down a judgment in this aspect. My PA was abducted and consequently killed, and three of my wards were killed. And they were captured clearly on camera. CD camera, they were captured. Then now I went to court. When I went to court, the police, the military, the SSS. That they didn't come to my house. Are you listening? Mazi, you are not being heard. Mazi yes. Patrick. Yes, I think that Barista Jafar is having issues, and I can understand based on the location he has found himself at this point in time. But I think uh, we would just continue uh, while he returns back. And I, I understand the question you were uh, trying to put across to Barista Jafar. I regard to what is the level of violation of human rights that is happening in the southeast as it stands today because you need to be more specific uh with the question for him to really understand uh you know the point uh that of the question that the level of human rights violation that is going on in the southeast and the level of intimidation that our people have to go through on a daily basis in going about their normal duties is alarming. So now, Barista Jofo, yes, go ahead, please. Okay. So uh, you, you see, my my response is predicated on the background of the second court system, right to freedom of um, of um, space and also against discrimination. No one should be discriminated against by reason of his ethnic group religious place of origin, but or else. But Igbos and Biafrans have been obviously on a daily basis, being discriminated against. I'll come to that. I'm just giving an analysis of what actually happened in my house. To date, those guys said they were... Okay, so Barry said, Jafar is out again. Uh, what I don't know, I believe that... Uh, I don't know if his, his uh, internet system is being put under attack. I cannot say for sure because uh, this is beyond technical, just mere technical problem. What do you have to say? I think it could, it, it could be possible. It could be possible because do you know that even as we are on this BTV right now, do you know that 70% uh, people are not seeing BTV? 70% people cannot search for BTV right now as we are here on air. So it is not out of place to say that possibly his internet is under attack. But we must proceed. Okay, so um, like he was trying to explain about his ordeal 
and how possibly the judiciary have also failed him, despite his position as uh, as a lawyer in Nigeria. Uh, he brings the question to the justice system that operates in, in Nigeria, and this is uh, and this is where some issues of Nigeria have come to roast because. Uh, if a justice system of a country cannot serve its purpose, of what use is the country? Because according to uh, the, 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 the phrase and the adage that the, ju that the, ju that the ju justice system is the last hope of the common man. And if the justice system cannot give a hope to the common man in a country uh, called Nigeria, then of what use is the existence of Nigeria where the justice system has failed? Presently, in the country of my resident, there is a, uh, a situation we had sometime in 2016, and the Minister of Internal Affairs of this country uh, held some individuals who were coming through the sea. Uh, they, he gave an order to hold some. Uh, some foreigners who were coming through the sea to enter uh, this country and they were held for days without water, without uh, any form of supply and many of, of these uh, hostages were, uh, you know, lost their lives and when they finally disembarked, um, the, the issue was taken to court. And to, since 2016 till now, the battle had been going on. Despite the fact that he claimed that he was representing the interests of the country. I'm, try, I'm trying to give you, a, I'm trying to paint a picture of what justice and the justice system of a country represent. And he has been on the battle of trying to convince all the judges, trying to convince the court, that the decision he took to hold the immigrant uh, hostages in the sea was for interest of the country. But we've seen recently that the judgment uh, came against him, despite that he was the Minister of Internal Affairs. And the position of the court was, you do not make a decision against the constitution of the country. You do not make a decision against the constitution of the country. He is still in government, but the judicial uh, arm of government have been able to prove that the justice system here works. And you compare it to a place like Nigeria, uh, where you have a government officials use the, uh, the justice system for their own personal interest. And the judge told this uh, uh, ex-minister of internal affairs that your decision to hold immigrants in the sea was against the constitution of the country, that it has nothing to do with the constitution, that it was for your own personal interest. You know, and this is a, a, a die-hard anti-immigrant person who doesn't want to see immigrants in, in, in Italy. But the justice system have stood against him to tell him that you do not make decisions against the constitution of, 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 of the country. You know, so uh, at the end of the day, he speaks of what a system is. He speaks a lot about a system. And I want to bring uh, Barrister Joffo to, to the question of how he perceived the Nigerian justice system. Because it's very, very important that as a lawyer, he, give us, he gives us an insight of how uh, he sees the justice system of, of, of Nigeria. Hey, Barista Jaffa, are you there? I'm, I'm back now. I'm back. I'm back on stage now. Sorry about that. Okay. So it's obviously, it's obviously my, my internet is, is, um, is under attack. Let me hope so. So I can't understand why I'm having this kind of situation. When I I have almost I have more than three Wi-Fi now I'm working on I'm I'm, I'm using. Yes, I can. So just like I'm, okay, I don't know where you start. We'll start. About, we've been talking about your internet that uh, we have a down that is just a normal technical problem. 
because uh, sure, 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 sure. Yeah. But I'm back. I'm back. Some, there could be some uh, interruptions here and there to make sure that you do not uh, participate in this program. But you can go ahead because there is a question I wanted to ask you. You are a lawyer, and we would like you to give us a, your perspective about the Nigeria justice system as a lawyer. What is your perspective about the Nigerian justice system? They will be able to go back to some of the experiences you've also had in the issue of the leader of IPOB, Mazen Namdekano, from where you stop your representation. We want to also look at what you've also gone through in the judiciary system, uh, your own experience in that regard. But can you give us a your general perspective of the Nigerian uh, judiciary system as it stands today? Well, what I can is somewhat a kind of time. Um, let me convey of uh, for want of time. So, what I will say about my general understanding, probably on or summary of Nigerian justice system, is the fact that um, we, uh, we we respect to Nigerian criminal justice system is that that, it, that institution the it's that is kind of is is they tend to protect the government and the the, gov the, the government and the government. It is skewed towards protecting the political class. I'm talking about criminal justice system. When we have extant laws that governs the application of, of that laws, we have laws and have procedures, court procedures that govern the application of that laws. But when you get into certain class, class of persons, those who consider themselves above the laws, those laws will not apply. That's what's obtainable in the system here. If uh, let me let me give an example, I will, I will I will also bring in focus live cases which we have also handled and those who are still handled today when it comes to the justice system. So and the, what also is affecting the system is corruption, corruption among the judicial officers, among also the 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 executives, and also intimidation too. Sometime in the past, we have had, had about where we are, how some judges' houses we are embedded in the night, including Supreme Court judges. So these are methods which they develop towards instilling fears on the judicial habitat, on the habitats. So, and in, on that note, most of them will be afraid, afraid of interpreting the law as it is. Any law, any law that we tend to, probably not to follow the state. Or any 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 situation that will tend not to value state, they will find a way of manipulating it. Of course, you saw what happened in the case in October 2022, when Court of Appeal was firm in ordering for his release and also his uh, suspension of trial. I'm talking about what happened in the past, I'm talking about present. So uh, to give you an instance. Then I don't know what happened in the Supreme Court. I want to go into that. So it's they are better the this the this this just justice system, criminal justice system is better put. But that protect, it protects the government, the government that the govern. So, and this is what we are traveling today because the human rights community in the country, they've gone to bed, they've gone to sleep. They're not active as it used to be. During the Gunatan administration, administration and also more, more parliament during, during the Gunatan administration, you can see protests all over the places from time to time. Even the present president of the country also protests at that point in time. So and nobody harassed them, nobody arrested them. Nobody put them to the prison. But today, you really come out to protest, even though they protested and were arrested and also being for civil offenses. So it's better, it's key towards favoring the, the, the state than the government. Okay. Um, what that job is, I don't know if you have a question for Barista Jafar, because I have a series of questions as we wrap, as we continue to wrap up the program. We've already spent 28 minutes in this uh, wonderful program. I want to uh, urge everybody uh, who is with us in this platform. We are streaming from all platform on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and every other BTV platform uh, uh, to please help us share and tag your friends so they can also join us. We would we'll be opening the line because I know that if we open the line for people to call it, it's going to be... It's going to be a, a whole lot of uh, <laughs> trouble. We are not going to leave this program today because I know that there are a lot of their friends who are anxious to have a direct contact and communication with the, with the barrister, Fanny Joff. And I know that you have series and series of questions on your mind uh, to ask. But if you feel that there are questions you want to ask, you can drop them on your comment section uh, so we can read out from that comment section 
to bring your uh, questions forward. What other Jovista? I don't know if you have any questions for Barista Jofo. Of course, I have a series of questions. Barista, can you hear me? I will too. All right, thank you, Barista. As we are on the issue of uh, human rights, Barista, on the 6th of uh, September 2024, there was IPOB press release on about 27 uh, secret detention centers where IPOB members and arrested Igbo residents we are taken to. Uh, Mazi, is there any evidence that those people that have been taken to those prisons ranging from a uh, Wawa prison to Abuja military base. Mazi, is there, a, sorry, Barista, is there any evidence showing that those people are still alive? <coughs> and secondly, well, if you are following our, um, my, probably my, I think so much, if you are, if you're following my release from time to time, you will, understand how concerned we are about the safety of their friends who are being abducted on daily basis from the southeast uh, sometimes if i was actually our last month i issued a very very stern press statement on this regard and i mentioned about places where they're being detained um this is one of the issues we're having today major issues we're having in the Biafran land today people have been arrested and the worst part is that you cannot even determine where they're being taken to that's the problem I will give you an example. We have um, that was last, wasn't last, that should be last year there about when there was a protest in Adan, yeah. and some people were arrested. And those, uh, during the during the during the arrest, some people also covered it. It was ca captured in video camera. So, do you know eventually when we pressed for the release of those arrested during this process, police in Abba denied ever having them in their custody we went to court and today we're still in court they even came to court and filed, an and filed a counter affidavit that they never participated in the arrest they were not there they didn't even know what you're talking about so they didn't know they didn't even know which will go and investigate those who conducted the operation at the day so then we have to file a further affidavit wherein we attach the video clips of when how they were arrested by the police the very police vehicles and every other thing so these are people who today, I cannot confidently tell you that they are still alive today. I cannot say that to you because it's only those who are lucky to be alive that can testify to what they passed through. Many people have been arrested, taken to known destinations, and sometimes who know whether they're alive, they've been, they must be eliminated. So these are situations we're having. And what actually is aggravating the entire situation is the activities of someone who 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 is who is wearing this crisis from somewhere in finland of course you know so the person will be there giving directive to those who ostensibly does not have the interest of people at heart to be doing things and in the and the, the police will know where these guys are they will know where those people who are perpetrating the people are they will they will leave them they will leave them they will not go after them they will go out after innocent people who are walking the streets of biafra and arrest them and sometimes those people will not come back alive sometimes you go you, when you go to stations to, 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 to demand for their release they will tell you they don't, they don't have them in their custody so this is the situation we're having as a matter of fact let me say this to their friends it's only those who are alive today who are alive and with definite place of detention that can be happy that's still alive why the matters goes on in court there are many of them that cannot account for if I tell you what happened in Abuja here, some between 2020 and 2021, 2022, my brother, you cry. We have it on record here. We have it here. Many of our many of people that were arrested from the from the southeast, who we are murdered, murdered here in Abuja here, they were killed here. So then they were released eventually. Gave us gave, gave, gave testimony as to what they probably passed through. And as I speak to you, some of the relatives are not even aware that as of their people have been killed, and we have taken it up against the police. We won't come to court and obtain the judgment to not effect. So I cannot confidently tell you that 
people who were arrested in the manner in which we are discussing that are alive. After all, yeah. two of my words have been detained in Wawa military, uh, uh, military uh, detention facility in Niger State today. So most of them who were, who were arrested, they cannot give account of their, of their safety, whether they are alive or not. This is a problem we're having today in the Biafran land. And it continues because people's houses have been invaded. Go, they will go to have people's houses at the wheel house and pick people, have done people. And if you go to talents them, tell them, ask the demand for the list of those who are arrested, they will tell them to have them. They will deny ever participating in the oppression, ever, ever coming, conducting the arrest, ever taking part in the oppression, that we should go and look for the people. They will even tell that they should matter in. Kill you the the person must have been conducted by those who are by their friends. They will tell you this or call yes and or call them um, whatever they want to call. So this is the situation we're having. And their friend needs to be aware of this. So for the, for the Nigerian security agents are aware of those who are committing this evil. They are aware of where they are. They are aware of where they are threatening from. They tell they have the, they have the information, they have their facts with them. And they sort of going out, going out, going out, going going against the people. Identifying the areas, the targets, and apprehending them. No, they will go to anybody they see on the street. And clearly, when you have any mark on your body, you are gone. They will say, Yeah, IPB member. Once anything, have a mark, they will transfer as IPB member. Tell you IPB member and take it off. And okay, now, zooming down, I'm in Abuja here. Today, there is no day that passes through no here, incident of arrest and abduction from the Afghan land. There's someone who will call me today and said, If your first something happened in probably Oasis or, or over it, my brother was going to church and was arrested. I will send the lawyer to go to go to over to go and find out where the first is being uh, detained. You go from one police station to another. In the end, you will not you don't see the person. You will not find him. You will not find him. It's only by stroke of luck you can be, be, be able to see where the person, some of them, some who are lucky. So this is the situation we're having in different lands. So if you understand the damage, the damage. This man is causing their friends today. If you understand the damage is causing our land, look at what's happening all today. I, yesterday, I, 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 I listened to one audio where somebody said that all, all that a particular community has been deserted completely. Now they have done impact on raiding houses, deserted houses. Are you are you getting what I'm saying? So this side, because what, you know what we are talking about, we are talking about situations. We also need to understand the remote cause, the cause of this problem, and how to go about it. And it appears, it appears from every indication that government is not doing anything to get it, to get to get them apprehended. Yeah. They're not doing much, they're not doing anything. They are rather going against innocent people. Uh, but Barrister, there is a question I would have loved to ask you because it's very, very important. I know. Uh, you've uh, had the you've you've put in a lot of work in freeing a lot of arrested IPOB members in different detention centers, and we saw uh, the level of effort you've also put in in making sure that those that were detained illegally uh, have been released. Uh, while we wait for Barrister Jofa to return back. Uh, because I want to put this question. Okay, I think that I'm, 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 I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm okay. with you. You know, I know, I know it's not, but how hectic has it been for those who you, who you were able to release? We, we've seen series of uh, uh, activities, your effort in making sure that, uh, especially some I, uh, IPOB members who were uh, arrested and detained have been released in different uh you know prisons uh across uh nigeria how hectic has it been for you uh embarking on this uh, job it is i can only attribute it to to god's um will we rely so much on his mercy and grace in the discharge of this sonorous um, tax. Of course, it was basically on account of these interventions that um, several attempts have been made on my life and that of my family and my workers. So, but God has been showing us mercy at every given time. And that cannot deter us from progressing. 
I've done a long line of cases here, which if I start mentioning, maybe it will take another 30 minutes to conclude about um, the African cases we're handling in different courts in Nigeria, ranging from Port Harcourt, uh, Abia State, uh, Ebon State, Abuja, and all whatnot. So, but I uh, will give God the glory. And you see, one thing about life, I had always been our advice, I will say, and maintain is that you must be upright and transparent in what you do. Do not allow anybody to derail you. That has been sustaining me. Honesty, truthfulness, and the dedication to, to believe in. So, and I do not think that any human being will change that my style of life because my confidence with my God. So, and that has been helping us. I know that this is a, a right course. I know that they're not those arrested and detained and have not done anything to deserve to, to be treated in the manner in which they're doing. So, and the only thing I can do in the circumstance through legal intervention, purely pro bono services, which we are doing. So, against all the odds, we cannot be detached, we cannot stop. We must progress, proceed. So, um, and also, more importantly, let me thank their friends and um, also the director of sex for also being there for us. Because I know several times, uh, heavy serious conspiracies have been uh, made, and uh, I remember has been made for us to be for something terrible to happen to me. But God, um, my vision of intervention of um, of uh, Bia France and also the other states, uh, those things, the the conspiracy was neutralized. So it was a very serious one, very serious one that would have taken my life. But God said no. That will, that will happen between January and June this year. But um, the information leaked. And it was um, it was fiercely fought for, and uh, God uh, is still with us. God is showing us mercy. So, and we cannot stop. As I had I said, we cannot stop. We must proceed. Look at our people. Some some of our we have some dear friends that were arrested sometime last year, December. I mean, two, two, yeah, our first some of them, fifty five of them, they were abducted in um, several places in Anambra State and brought to Abuja. They were still being held in a cafe prison. So we are in court about we are caught on on their matter and caught though court has freed them, but we are seeing to tell um, sure. okay. So this is what we are having every day. You have about a situation whereby some confirmed Boko Haram terrorists were arrested and they have vetted and integrated into the into the force. But be friends will be, be friends will be arrested and taken to the unknown destination. Some will be killed. Have you had any of them who has been who they have taken to the rehabilitation center or who have been who we have who are pardoned by the government? You have not had any of your friends have been on pardon. No, you cannot hear that. So this is a situation we are finding we, we are finding ourselves in the country. So and I believe God has a purpose for bringing us to be in this position. I believe how God has a purpose for for, being, for placing us in this position we are today. So and the, the moment to say we will not we will not do again. I believe that grace will be taken from us. So we must proceed to do it, to discharge that on the narrow stack. Uh, I think, uh, Barrister, your voice keeps breaking uh, as a result of uh, whatever situation you are facing and, can, and I can relate, I can understand. Uh, there is a question I want to ask because uh, you've talked about what have given the Nigerian uh, security forces the effrontery to go on a full-fledged intimidation of our people, uh, illegal adoption, uh, and a uh, series of um, unnecessary harassment. Uh, do we now say that the criminality that is going on in, in, in our land today is perpetrated purposely for that purpose to give the Nigerian state uh, the opportunity to continue to harass our people uh, it is, is is it the situation in your own opinion that that is suspected that is the direct consequence of the of the of those um, of the of the criminal activities going on that is the, that is the direct consequence of it because when such thing is happening and i also i believe that the Southeast governors are not doing much because I'm written them severally on account of this to get involved in this. 
we're not saying that Mr. Good agents have no right to arrest or probably go after criminals. But what you are saying, profile these people. There are people, you know, people who are doing this thing. You know the criminals who are terrorizing our people. You know people who are kidnapping their own, killing their own in the name of the struggle, whatever they are doing, which I don't believe is a part of struggle. So you know them, you know where they are. So when you want to go after them, provide them and allow the innocent Bia friends to go about their normal lives. They know I've, I've written to governors, Saudi governors on this because they have they also have a lot of role to play. It's not a function of someone, a lawyer writing. No, government has a role to play. They have to wear it in and ensure that it is stopped. Look at what happened about some time. We came out and condemned the killing of the soldier. But in the end, a lot of Bia friends were arrested, not send Bia friends, in their hundreds. And I personally have to write before the government get in, got involved and many, many people were released too. So it's not something that you need a political way to, you need a political intervention too from the, from the side of state government. So we understand what's happening in the Southeast. I don't want to say that there's a clear connivance between those who are doing this and, this and the government that is sent. I don't want to say that. But what I'm saying is the fact that the state government has a lot of, South government has a lot of role to, a lot, a lot of role to play in this regard. They have to, so they have to intervene Interface with security agents on how they are arresting us and their friends, abducting them, and possibly and uh, uh, detaining and killing some of them. So we know those who they know those who are doing this thing. I will condemn it in all its entirety. I condemn it and I conclude uh, this is time condemned. What I mean has nothing to do with agitation, has no has nothing to have has no any connection with agitation whatsoever. What they are doing is pure criminality. Pure act of terrorism it has nothing to do with uh, 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 station. They know those who are doing station. They know IPOB who stand for station. They know what I mean. And IPOB has never been got, has not, doesn't get, get, get involved in such criminality. But anybody they arrest today, they will attack the person IPOB member. So I would, anybody they arrest today, they will send the person IPOB member. So the state government has a lot to play to get involved in this, in resolving, in checkmating the excesses of the security agents in the Southeast. Thank you very much. I want to add, Jovista, I don't know, uh, you have a question for Barista? Yes, I have a um, follow-up question to the question that I asked him uh, previously. Barista, um, as we are talking about these people that we cannot, or you cannot ascertain whether they are alive or not, um, despite that, Biafrans are so consigned or curious about some uh, friends or IPOBs that were adopted long time now. People like uh, Chooks or Basi. Uh, and uh, those couple, Mr. Uh, Patrick Osuago and his wife, Franca Osuago, um, Ike Chuku Henry, Kinsley Chima, and host of others. These people have you discovered where they are, including your own uh, words. Do you know exactly the detention facilities, facilities where they are? Secondly, secondly, um, there is this uh, disclosed uh, report that uh, some their friends who were taken to Wawa prison has been court martialed. Persons like uh, um, a American governor who was abducted on his way uh, back from Lagos to the east. We heard from that report that him and numerous others has been court martialed in uh, Wawa prison. Sir, is it, uh, is it not contrary to uh, Nigerian constitution for civilians to be court martialed? And thirdly, I don't know if you are putting down these questions. Do I hold on yeah. or do I continue? Well, well, I think yeah, yeah, you have to let him answer the two questions. Okay. Uh, then he can okay. come. You can come back with the third one and one that, so that uh, he will right. be able to be uh, comprehensive in the response. So let me start with um, some of the dear friends that were arrested and um, detained. They are aware about and safety. I've touched this question in my previous response to your numerous questions. But let me, with particular reference to Chief Sobasin, we find an action in court against him, the Nigerian security agents immediately after he was abducted in his house. And police was involved. 
the SSS was involved, we started to file action against them. And judgment was entered in our favor in Abuja here. So, and we served them. Just like what I've been saying, they came to court and said they didn't go there. We served the police, we served the DSS. Can understand our frustration? They said they didn't go there. And as I speak to you now, I cannot confirm to you whether this man is alive or dead. Because we would not be able to, we would not, we would not establish any form of contact with him. Not at all. So, but the judgment has been, has been, the judgment has been, has been um, entered in his favor. So these are the these are the frustration we are having uh, today, and same is applicable to some of the persons we mentioned. We will still have pending cases against those detaining them today. In few occasions, they will file a charge against them, and as soon as they file a charge against them, as a matter of fact, we have to thank God that we have, at least this person is alive. How many of them they file charge charges against them? I want to see that the charge of the file against them, which was which basically is being prompted by our application for their fundamental right enforcement. So once they file a charge against them on the to justify their detention, that's to say that that will tell you that this person is alive. So some of them they file charges against them and we, we are we are on it. We are in court with them as far as uh, today. So the second question you ask is my words. My word of course you are aware that I've gotten judgment against this all the, the security agencies that came to my house, the police, the SSS, the military, that participated in the oppression. So, and uh, we monitored, luckily enough, I monitored the, the, the movement. And based on information available to me, when they were detained at the SSSS, was when, we, when I got the large judgment against them. And when I, after granting press conference to the world, addressing the world on their, on their matter, they quickly and clandestinely took them away to, to took them to Wawa, uh, detention military detention facility. That's why they are, they are being detained now. So, however, I've I've taken further step, which I may not be able to discuss here. I've taken further step, first step to ensure that the security agents release them. So, which we are presently exploring. Of course, you know that this broadcast, this interview is being monitored and watched by security Nigerian security agents. So, whichever strategy you are adopting to get some of this people out may not be discussed here. Then, um, with respect to American gun, American gun, I, I of course, is a, a friend of a colleague of mine who is also in his matter. So, I actually got to know about some of the Boko Haram terrorists that we are tried. It's not that it's not cost martial, but it was trial in secrecy because they were not allowed to to bring in their lawyers. They were they were they were they were they were kind of um. Uh, they were kind of um they were not allowed to bring in the lawyers they were some of them like a mechan gun either from what i had because i didn't have the information full information with me they were giving lawyers from lego ed to defend them over there which is totally wrong so um i don't have the information about the other people you mentioned apart from this american gun day but with respect to others because the problem we have with those who are being detained in this forward prison facility, a detention facility of military, military, military barracks, is that we don't have their names. We don't know them. We don't know all of them. So apart from those we know, that we are also in court in their matter. And it takes them time to respond to some of these applications. It takes them time to respond to it. It would it most of the time they take them even six months to respond to. So and once someone is taken to that facility, consider the person because that is a very tough task to get the person out of that place. Until, unless court intervene, like usually they will send, like in this case, they send courts to that place to determine to try them, to try them, some of them. So, and some convicted, giving some years sentence. So, and we are also protesting it today. Like I've done a letter to, I've done a letter in that regard, which I will not mention the movement of the letter. But when I heard about this, I took action. I drew a letter, a letter to relevant authority. Also protesting about the fact that citizens who are arrested and detained there, we're not allowed, most of the when the when their matters are in court, we're not allowed to bring in the lot of to defend them or to bring them to court to determine their fate. So I've done letters to that effect, which I believe is receiving attention now. Okay, what that Chi Chi, uh, your your last question on this uh... and also it's against it's against Nigerian law to subject civilians to military detention and trial. But what you see today 
is where civilians will be taken to military barracks. And the ten, I would mean, so with in total disregard of the Eastern law. Of course, I've already mentioned that laws are not being obeyed in this in this institution with, with compassion of Nigeria. Laws are not being obeyed. They 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 it's better in the they're not being obeyed in they're not, they're not being obeyed in Nigeria. So this we see this and it's part of grave violation of human rights. Because law, human rights is very clear, law is very clear as to where citizens violence will be violence will be because they're not military personnel. So if someone committed an offense due to law, the person should be taken and be arrested, then brought before the court to be tried. If the person is found wanting guilty of the offense charge, the person should be taken to prison facility to start the jail term. Jail term. If a people appeal, they succeed. So but in this case, you see where civilians are being subjected to military detention and the uh, and the arrest. So that will tell you the, 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 the situation we found ourselves in the country. And no, and not no more, no, 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 and no, and the and the human rights community has suddenly gone moot. They've gone to bed. Nobody's talking, and nobody's concerning government uh, uh, policy in this regard. Nobody's talking about it. There's an issue about it apart from us. Yeah, All so right, thank you, uh, Barista. Uh, my next question is about those in Ebony prison. There are many, I, I would say, uh, thousands. Yes, thousands of Biafrans are in a bony prison. So, what efforts have you made, or can you tell us the fate of those people? Mentioned, in... You also mentioned about. Uh, let, let me let me just clarify this. You also mentioned about someone, this time Mr. C K P D K Chuku Henry. So, because I understand that some people will be listening to this interview, we file application for their for their release before the federal court Abuja, and the question to which. Uh, the SSS filed a response to our application. And in their response, they stated clearly in black and white that this people have been taken to our military detention facility. So so that those who are listening will understand where their people are. So I'm, I'm talking about with respect to this time, Mrs. Ifeli, you came to go here. So we are, we are still in court in that matter. So go on, go on with the question. All right. So uh, what about those in Ebony uh, State uh, Prison? Can you tell us what is their fate, if they are coming out or not? And uh, what efforts have you made for these people that have spent years in a body prison? Uh, also, there are many Biafrans that have been abducted. Some, their homes were invaded. Some were picked at checkpoints. Some on the road. Some in the places of their, uh, of their works. And these people... Uh, most IPOB members, Barista, I don't know if you are still there. I'm with you. Yeah, I'm here. I'm with you. I'm here. Okay. All right. All right. And these I'm people, I'm okay, many of these people are Igbos or Biafras. They are not IPOB members. But once they are picked, the Nigerian security tag them IPOB or ESN. Sir, so what is their reasons for doing this? For tagging every Igbo speaking person they picked as a member of IPOB or ESA? Are, are, you, are you hearing me? All right, sir, so you are coming out. Yes, we can hear okay. you, Barista. Go ahead. You are coming clearly. Okay, with respect to the we have friends that were being detained at um, Ebony State. It will interest the world to know that these people were arrested sometime between the between 2020 and 2021. And we went to court in the same Ebony State. They were charged for offense of murder. We defended them. At the end of the prosecution case, the court discharged them of the offense of murder. And directed they should be allowed to go. That same day, they filed a fresh charge against them. The borders on illegal possession of firearms, uh, belonging to a lawful society, uh, uh, and other 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 frivolous uh, allegations. Then we then start another case of trial. The prosecution fielded their witnesses, tendered the evidence. Improve their case. 
and at the end of the persecution case, we we'll find we we'll find a no case of Mr. Nasser because we are convinced and satisfied that the prosecution has not been able to establish his case. Allegations against these innocent people. And the court, for the second time, discharged them and asked them to allow them to go. So I want you to understand the trajectory of what you have passed through or what they've passed through. So, and directed that you are allowed to go. Now, they filed another charge against them, which is the third charge now before the court. And as I speak to you, they've concluded their case. And had filed also another no case submission. However, there are other interventions which I am personally making, which I may not be able to discuss here, because obviously it has shown from every indication that they is political, their detention has is political other than law. So we are we are filed a no case submission, which may be here coming for hearing anymore from now. I may not mention it. So and uh, at the end of the hearing, it date will be set, set aside for judgment. And I believe, hopefully, and by, by virtue of um, other interventions we are making, which also with the knowledge of the US, so I believe that um, uh, in this case, they will be out. So, so we can understand what they will pass through and what we, who are going there, have been are passing through. And I want to also to appreciate that in this letter case, I am the one personally defending them. I'm always in court any day the matter is coming up. I travel to the state any matter the matter is coming up to, 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 to conduct their cases. So until the prosecution concludes the case and also we file this uh, uh, no case submission, I'm waiting now adoption and judgment. Yes, uh, Barista, thank you very much. Uh, 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 we didn't attend to the question of why did they tag every Igbo uh, residents they treat as IPOB and ESN. Why do they do that? Or why are they doing that? Now, um, what I want you to understand, what I want you to understand with respect to the reckless classification of any Biafrans, a party member, is simple. It is political. They know just like okay. a earlier aside, it's just merely to demonize IPUB as an institution, as a body, as an organization. To demonize that people as an organization, and also to paint them back before black before the international community. Of course, you know that the purported prosecution of IPUB in Nigeria has not been ratified across the world. Of course, you know that because they understand the world know that the prosecution of IPUB is, is the political. Because IPUB does not possess the character of terrorist organization. As an organization. So what they are doing, what they are effortlessly doing in classifying any member, any peer friend they arrested today as IP member is to demonize them and to tell the international community that look, you will say you are not going to ratify our prosecution of IP as an organization. See what they are doing. When in fact that they are not the people who are doing that. I only a few days ago for the first time, now that should be our last, last okay, we're naming with now, now that last week. The Nigerian military issued a statement and from and the front family now this time around mentioned the name of uh, a group who are terrorizing the southeast. They mentioned the name and the person who is leading them. But these are things, these are things they are familiar with. These are these are the facts they are familiar with. And this is a, this is a fact the Nigerian police is familiar with. This is a fact the Nigerian DSS is familiar with. For the first time, the military mentioned the name of this group. Who are traveling the state and, and the southeast? So, and they know those who are arresting innocent Biafrans and clans, find them as, IPB, as terrorists, tagging them as IP members, know that actually IP members are not who are doing this. They know those who are doing that. Instead of calling them by their name, they will not call them by their name. Because it is it is a game plan. It's a game plan to demonize them, one, two, to represent them in bad faith before the international community. That's all. No. Okay. Uh, Marisa, Marisa. I think the, the picture is very clearer now. I can now, or Biafra can now relate why they continue adding the uh, midget in, in Finland. Even when he will boast of what he will do and he will, uh, he, he will kill the army, kill uh, other people, and post it on his ex uh, account. And the Nigerian uh, security will continue tagging IPOB using the media to refer him 
to IPOV. So the picture is clear on that because even when they invaded their camp in Oslo, their names were clearly written uh, written uh, boldly in, in, in their camps. Yes, they went ahead to say that Nigerian army invaded IPOV camp. Yes. I think that, uh, Barista, are you back? I'm too, I'm yelling you. I'm, I'm, I'm too, I'm yelling clearly. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, for me, personally, Yes, Barista, I think you've given answers to, you've given answer to, uh, um, so some of the questions that we have put also, across. Let me also, let me also, let me also, let me also, uh, also remind you that the case of um, the tax six detainees in is not only the case we handle in the But how other cases where they are, we are detained at um, the case of Onweke High Court. We are in about, 20, uh, about 25, about 19 of them were arrested and detained. In that case, they were tried for offense of armed robbery kidnapping, belonging to unlawful society, and in the end, we we'll find no case submission, and that on okay high court discharged them also, and they have been, these 19 persons have gone since long time, they've gone. So, so apart from this one, we are late now, they've gone, they've been released, and they've gone. So. Okay, uh, okay, thank you, Barista. Uh, very, very interesting. Uh, nobody needs to be told the volume of uh, the volume of job you have on your hand, because uh, you know, a lot of people believe that um, you are just there redundant. Uh, many people do not believe or do not even understand the amount of work you have in your hand and the job you have been doing uh, in making sure that you stand up for those who are. Uh, oppressed. And uh, I, I remember when uh, Mazin Nambekano was uh, released finally from detention uh, before the invasion of his home. Uh, I remember the kind of effort you put in place in working out all the necessary um, uh procedures for his uh, bail condition and things like that uh and we also have seen uh the challenges that you faced uh, when he was also renditioned from kenya and some of the challenges that came with uh you know with your effort uh which i would not want us to go into details but we cannot completely exclude some of those experiences you have had in recent time representing uh, the leader of IPOB, uh, Mazen Namdekano. And I know that uh, the representation has changed. We, uh, we now have a new uh, legal counsel. But I would like to ask you specifically, what effort did you put you know, in making sure, because I know you won a series of cases from the time he was renditioned from Kenya uh, to the continuous illegal detention. Uh, what have been your effort? Because it's important that Biafans understand the effort you have put in making sure that in this last abduction, that, you know, that he got justice, especially being able to also state that fact that he never jumped bail. What have explained to us what effort you have made in this last, uh, you know, abduction from Kenya, the extraordinary rendition back to uh, to Nigeria? What was and uh, what were your efforts? In just, in just, I just, in a very brief summarized, uh, uh, you know, terms, if I may use that word, terms, please. Thank you so much. You know, um. I had indicated before now that I will want to discuss um Mazin Namikano's case. Uh, I understand also you are a concern. So uh, I have I have not discussed it in any way, whether our past efforts will speak for itself 
or current um, uh, outing by the now uh, Lego team uh, for reasons we have postponed as um, given before now. However, um, Mazin and the Kano, we started this case in 2015 actually, because I may not start from June 2021 when it was a rendition to Nigeria. And we did, we did well. Uh, I don't know what I don't want to comment myself, but of course the facts is there, and then um, the files also have the facts with them. So um, we did well. I don't want to. I, I don't want to comment myself because you people have also witnessed what we have done. We eventually secured the solids. Not only him. Not only him, of course, his comrades too. Benjamin Madibu was involved. My team is here, also was involved. Um, uh, uh, Chidebe and Udibe was involved, and the Benjamin, ben, um, David, the one we see. Uh, and not only that, I secured the release of this comrades, I followed up to perfect their release, their, their bail. I personally followed it up to perfect the terms granted by the court for their, for their bail. I, Barsifa, and Jopo followed it up. And they, those I'm talking about know what I mean by perfecting their bed. They know what happened. So without any of them being involved in getting that thing done, but I give God the glory for making it possible for us. So before, uh, of course, what happened within that period, before Nabikaro's house was invaded, and then um, uh, his um, subsequent external rendition to Nigeria on June 26, 2021. We took over again, and between June 2021 and uh, and um, January 2024, the France we testified to what we we achieved under the leadership of Professor Michael Zekomo. So, and uh, before we visited, so and I believe he actually exercised right to choice of counsel, which is a constitutional guarantee right. And uh, I personally, because on principle, choose not to discuss it because. I wouldn't know why I said I don't want to discuss it for the friends to know because they've been asking me questions even on my platforms, on my pages, calling me on phone, that I should not, I should not engage, I should not do that. I, just, I said, no. You see, the point is that when we, this, when we are in this matter, we recorded several judgments, rulings, in his favor that was possibly leading to his release. Let me just stop here. There's some people we are somewhere writing against us, giving opinion on what else what else we're handling. No, no, Barrister, I, I, I understand you. I understand. There is a reason I ask. Yeah, Barrister, there is a reason I ask this question. I don't want you to, I do not even expect you to go into detail because I know that a lot of things happen. But yes. anytime people Yes, Mazi Patrick, I understand you. Your face. And there is an issue we can. Yes, there is an. It's not an issue we can shy away from. But what I wanted to register, uh, in this conversation, is, you know, the success you have made. Because we all know that there are instances where the court have, uh, you know, released and acquitted him and have, have asked him to go home. And it is very, very important that we continue to reiterate this position, uh, notwithstanding, uh, uh, yeah, the, the barrister is out of the place. So, because it's important that we continue to reiterate the position of the court uh, in the uh, release and the acquittal, the unconditional release and the acquittal of Mazem Namdekano. And that is the reason I am asking this question. Because a lot of people still live without a doubt that is it really true that the court really acquitted Mazin Nam the Kano? Uh, and that is the reason I have decided to put this question across to you. Uh, for you to really confirm if the court have actually acquitted unconditional, uh, unconditionally released, it's not, we don't want to go into details, but I want you to reaffirm that if the okay. court uh unconditionally okay. released and acquitted Mazin Namdekan. Very, very important for uh, our listeners. Okay, thank you so much. And uh, let me start from when Mazin Namdekan was auditioned, 
to Nigeria. The federal government amended the charge, the earlier charge, the earlier subsisting charge against him, and increased it to 13 count charge that substantially borders on different offenses now. Then, under the leadership of our elder League Council, an application. Okay, we we'll find an application actually. I, I initiated an application for to challenge to challenging the competency of the child before we before the introduction of my of my of my, of my, of my mentor, Professor Michael Zeko from SN. So before his introduction to the case, and he came in, reviewed the entire thing, then and um, filed a very we filed a very composite objection to the charge, which he argued before the court, very loudly argued. And the court, the court struck out its count charge out of 13, the many seven, right? A 15 count, this 15 count charge, the court struck out eight, the many seven. Then, unsatisfied with the rule of the court, then I say, and our team proceeded to court of appeal to challenge the remaining seven counter. And the, on October 22nd, 2022, October 22nd, 2022, the Court of Appeal, Abuja Division, in a unanimous judgment, unanimous judgment, when, when I call, when, when I say unanimous judgment, means judgment delivered, agreed by the three presiding judges of the Court of Appeal. The, the court substantially, because the judgment in principle struck out the many counts that are charged to fight against him, the canon. Directed the SSS to release him unconditionally and prohibited federal government from filing a fresh charge against him. So, or proceeding with further trial in the matter. This judgment was delivered and has been reported in my general report. They were delivered on the 2nd of October. 2022, while ruling on our appeal against the many counter charge under the leadership of Michael Zekon SN. So that was the day the Nabekan Spet was damaged by the court. And the judgment was served on the federal government for eight hours after. So I don't want to go into what happened after. You know, of course, you don't want to spring God and whatnot. So, yeah, I don't want you to go. I don't even want you to go yeah. further. I don't want you to go further. Now, based on that, based on the answer you've given so far, based on the answer you've given so far, do we now ascertain that the continuous illegal detention of Mazin Nam the Kanu is illegal? Do is it is it the position as it stands today? Because I don't want us to go into full details of things that have happened after you left as his legal like, counsel, but can we ascertain as of today that the continual detention of Mazin Nam the Kanu based on court order is illegal? That is all we want to hear from you. Uh, my, uh, my, 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 Patrick, you, can, you are indirectly inviting me to give an op opinion on an issue I don't want to get involved in. Because I cannot answer this question without making Explanation that will possibly impact what is happening in court one way or the other today. So I may not answer this question because if I answer that question, okay, okay, it will okay thank you, Barista. Negatively, I'm coming. Or possibly impact what they are doing in court today, the drama going on in court today. So I okay. don't want to Beautiful. go into answering that. Came, can the can the phone well. number be, be pre, uh, um, uh, what are the, the, Go ahead. If you have any other questions. Go ahead if you have other um, questions. I think um, yes, a phone number has to be made available now as we continue on other questions because we know that why we are here today is to talk about the violations of human rights and what the constitution says about it, and also talk about the forceful uh, uh, disappearances of the people residents both the IPOBs and non-IPOBs, that's the issue why we are here today, because uh, um, as IPOB, we understand that uh, Barrister Ifani Ejofo and uh, Professor Ozokame-san is no longer the uh, 
lead counsel of Mazen and the Kanu, but they are still the lawyers of IPOB, and that is why we are here today. Please, uh, the numbers to call plus four nine one one five two one six six zero nine nine three seven. Please, technical director, can you project the number, please, on the screen? Plus four nine one one five two one six six zero nine nine three seven. Please, uh, we want to advise our callers, please, if you are calling, please base your question on human rights violations, um, the constitutional rights of uh, every Igbo speaking man or woman, or you can even talk about the violation of human rights in general in Nigeria. Because, you know, in the beginning, we talked about the protesters who has been arrested or some human activists who have been arrested because you are carrying just a placard. You'll be arrested and will be charged with a treasonable felony. Why those who we are waiting AK-47 has been uh, tagged and nicknamed bandits and the Nigerian... Um, media is going on with that they have removed them from being terrorists and now uh, have beautified their name to be bandits and wherever they carry out attacks instead of narrating it the way it is that these people invaded communities and did this or the other they will tell you that they had a communal clash. This is what Nigerian government is using Nigerian media to do today, and that is why we are here today. Barista, as we proceed, I have this question to you, or for you anyway. Please, uh, Barista, as a human rights uh, lawyer, is there any other institution that the place of IPOB members needed to be presented internationally within Nigeria? legal frame as we know that the amnesty international and the un human rights organizations are already in the know of our plight is there any other efforts that you are making that any other legal institutions we know about our plight calls are already coming in but um I think we permit Barista to answer this question before we start picking the quest the calls. Yeah, definitely. And uh, Mad, as the calls are coming in, we would also like to give them a time frame for whatever question they want to ask. Very, very well, 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 technically well, 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 I'll technically answer this question because of um I'll answer it in a way you understand what uh, where I'm going to. There are interventions going on legal interventions global legal intervention in respect of, of uh, the fate of uh, the affairs in the house of the national government um because of what experience we had sometimes a few months ago within the um within the one of the institutions and then um, the, the the manner in which the the proceedings was um, compromised by obviously uh, people who have been who was influenced by the state we choose not to discuss those legal interventions in the public we choose not to discuss um, the strategies the the institutions who are presently looking into the matter because um I do not have the mandate of the organization I represent, of course, you know, to give further light on this or probably um, to discuss this with their friends because um, they've gone deep on this. They've gone deep on this. And that I can assure you, and I may not be able to discuss it here unless maybe in a subsequent uh, interview, I'll be able to tell you what better be assured that they are, they are taking serious steps 
on this issue and the uh, complaint and legal interventions have been made uh, across the globe and i may not be able to especially as to institutions who are sensitive of the matter now thank you so much i i hope you understand with me please you just for uh, 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 yes marissa please let's start taking the calls because the, the line is posted yeah let's start taking the calls please yeah, but it is important that you may not be able to answer all the questions, but we appreciate uh, oh whatever uh, Mr. put across that you can give us answers to. I mean, numerous yes. calls, they couldn't even allow people to... Yes, caller number one. You are welcome to the program. Your name... Oh, my God. The, the lines are buzzing. Caller, you are welcome to the program. Your name and where you are calling from. Thank you, my sister. Brother Jones. This is Mark Boy. I'm calling from. It's important that uh, uh, we confirm if uh, Barista Jofo is hearing clearly. Uh, because uh, if questions are going to be put across to him, it's important that he, he has an, an audible. Uh, Yes, I'm trying. I'm trying to do that, but um, there are so much calls coming in. But I'm trying to to do that so that a barista could hear the caller very well. Caller, are you there? Please be audible so that barista can attend to your question, please. Uh, do, you just have two minutes, please. So many calls are coming in. Please, just two minutes. Please. Okay. We would, also, we would like to have an alternative uh, uh, technical director for the sky, the Skype ID on the screen, please. Uh, I believe that you should be able to have uh, the Skype ID. Come on, please, please. Are you here with us? Are you here with us on this program? Please, we uh, we, did, uh, we gave a, a directive. Please let others who have uh, questions ask. Please, if you are here with us, uh, you shouldn't come with this question right now. Thank you. Another caller on the line. Caller, good evening and welcome to the program. Your question, please. Hello. Two minutes so that others can call in and ask their questions, please. I can hear you clearly. You are welcome to the program. Okay. Good afternoon, Barista. And good afternoon. Um, uh, my name is uh, Godwin, calling from Switzerland. And uh, my question to to uh, Ebu Barista is that people we are talking about that uh, he's uh, he's no more. Yes, uh, Mada, what is it? Are you is it not coming clear? Are you having technical problem? Are you hello, caller? Hold on, caller. Can you hold on? Barista, are you hearing him? Yes, I'm hearing him. Okay, all right, go ahead. He's hearing you, but be fast, please. Others are calling. All right, I want to know if he's already if uh, only in the staff team or not, if he's still the barista of IPOB. That's my question. You should tell Biafra if you stay the barista or not. All right, Barista Thank you for your question. Another question. Are you done? All right, Barista, did you get his question?
and uh, Marzi, are you not even wondering how could somebody who has been here on this program we come to be asking such a question? Uh, the barrister has been here discussing the efforts he has been making in releasing IPOB members. And even before the phone lines were opened, we also talked about Barrister Ifanye Jofo and the son of Zokome not um, uh, being the lead counsel of uh, Mazen and the Kano any longer, but remain IPOB uh, lawyer. So imagine how some people reason that they come with such questions. Caller on the line, good evening and welcome to the program. Caller, can you go ahead, please? Okay, go ahead. Yeah, please, two minutes. The, the, so many people are calling in. Two minutes, please. Don't exceed two minutes. No problem. My name is Oswa. I'm coming from Ibocha. And my question to Barista. Because now 1967, during that they are found genocide, we know that the war has been declared opening to us. And as uh, people are fighting it, they know that there is war. But this time around, the, the pattern that they are using now is to be taking us one after the other. Because these security agents, they are busy diminishing us, killing us. And it's also their pattern that they are using in order to be killing us so that at the end, before you know what is happening, our population will reduce to minorities that if they come again, they will wipe us, all of us out. Because as of last two years that that bishop was kidnapped, if the food and people are kidnapping, told him that well, there, is, there is a time that they will give signal to all the hopeful and at that time, they will come and wipe us all of us out. And this is the pattern they are using that to be the missile so that by the time that we demise up to the new west, they will now come in full time. My question there is that when we when we will have a line line and say that enough of all these things is enough is enough because this pattern of extra judicial killing is too much and it's high time that we rise up and defend ourselves because Nigeria agent and their Evil doings is, is all about to do us all so that we will find way in order to, to make us why the sun shine. My question to Paris is where will all this extrajudicial killing? Where will we be saying no to that? That's my question, Wada. Thank you. Thank you. Barista, did you get his question? Barista, did you get the question of the caller?
Carla, just hold on. Let um, us attend if Barista is hearing us. And the uh, last day, Patrick, this we tell you how our people reason. I wonder how people will be listening to a program like this and they are coming up with such questions. Don't you think there is a, that something is not adding up somewhere? Probably no. they were not here to listen to what we were saying. They were just here with that question that they have in their mind. And probably to all we have been saying here, they were not even listening. Yeah, man, Because uh, one should be able to know the, the questions that should be made for IPOB and for IPOB legal preliminary. Well, uh, well, as far as I'm concerned, uh, people have the right to ask whatever questions uh, they have in mind. You cannot limit, uh, you cannot limit uh, their mindset or corner them to, uh, you know, whatever question you feel they should be asking. They have the freedom to do that. But as the moderators, it is our duty to streamline the questions and uh, give it a direction. Uh, we are dealing with the public. And we do not expect that everybody will have the uh, broader understanding of the topic on board. But it is our duty as the presenters of this program to give direction uh, to specific issues as we are handling them and uh, make them understand uh, where we stand and what we want to achieve in this program. So for us, we do not, not want to uh, put people on, on a scale uh, to measure them, uh, because it is natural that when you deal with uh, uh, you know a wider audience, questions are definitely going to come from even places you don't expect. Yes, so I think the barista is back. Barista, are you back? Um, I just came back now. I've not been following the questions. Maybe, maybe you have to refresh my memory, please. Though. Okay. Yes, we will take we take fresh. Oh, we will take fresh uh, questions. We will take fresh questions. We have uh, technically attended to the previous questions, and people were complaining that they were not hearing you. VRC has not been speaking. Our guest has not been speaking because uh, he was having this uh, glitch. So I think he has now overcome it. So right now we are taking fresh questions, and uh, you can now hear him. Come back now, eh?
and all the politicians. Please, that is what my that is what I that is what I want to know. What are they doing? Thank you. Your questions are noted. Thank you, Barrister. Did you get his question? Thank you, Barrister. Are you with us? Very well, very well. All right. Thank you so much. Um, <clears throat> in specific response to the question, and we say it's a function of political will, and and with my own limited uh, capacity, I've personally written some of the uh, chief executives of the Southeast seeking for the intervention as far in the manner in which uh, to stop the manner in which innocent Biafrans are profiled and abducted and and probably taking to known destinations as we are sorry that um we can see um we are having that doubt that uh barrister's internet is a uh, under attack as and okay. possibly the point I want to make, I'm so I'm so to make one all of us to understand, is that these monsters does not even spare their friends too. These are people that can kidnap their own brothers, kill them, uh, uh, do all sort of things with them, kidnap, kill, rape, and do all sort of things. So these monsters does not spare us too. So the point is that it's something that people should come together to fight a common enemy. Because they are they are enemy of their fans. They are not into any form of agitation. They are not into any form of project that will liberate the, our people. So I've written to the chief executives, the part of governors, and also notify, have discussion, notify some of some other people who are the natural assembly, seeking for intervention. Uh, because you see, the way and manner our people are being arrested, it's not arrest, it's a criminal because when you when you when you arrest, the, the, the essence of arrest is to arrest and detain in a place where someone will come and you'll be able to tell the person look at the offense the person arrested committed but in a, in the when someone is arrested without a definition or location of where he's been detained that's an abduction so and it's rampant it's going on everything even as i speak to you today it's going on every day in Nabia family so in as much as i am not against fighting crime in any form but the fact is that we have to be there has to be fast is that the innocent Biafran have to separate them from those who are committing crime. They have to separate innocent Biafran from the monsters who are desecrating the evil land. That's what I'm saying. Because these people are not committing any offense for arresting. You know the, the criminals where they are. You know where they know. You know where they operate from. Go after them. And they have the support, even the support of our community to fight the criminals. As one of the of the of the of the, of the every double the, the member of society to fight them. Yeah, Mars, you know, there's always what delay. The, 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 the yeah. point is that it is the duty of every responsible citizen to join hands in fighting crime. And repeatedly, IPB had in their very statement here tomorrow insist and also clear. They are very clear about people, the, those who are in the room. They are not working with the government. I said they've repeatedly in their statement condemned those. Hello? 
Of course. I think I've answered this question in my previous uh, response. I hope uh, that you are aware I've answered this question. Yes, and you I have done that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Please, uh, call on the line. Good evening and welcome to the program. Caller, can you hear me? Caller on the line, welcome to the program. Yeah, hello, please. I just have a question. Uh, my question to the barrister, Your name and your, where you are calling from, please. Just one minute. You have one minute. Series of calls are coming in. Let's uh, attend to as many as we could, please. Just one minute. Okay, I'm calling from Munich. My name is here. So I'm a, I have a very, very quick question for Mazen Nambekalo on behalf of him. I wanted to ask uh, because he went to Israel and my question was he went for um, protection in Israel while in Israel. Hello? Go ahead, please. One minute, yeah. please. While in Israel, I wanted to know if they were able, if the barrister was able to reach out to the Israeli government of Benjamin Netanyahu or international communities to please to help us in this situation to help us out in this, in this situation because the, what we are seeing right now because in, in this in this contract what we are seeing right now is the total men you know we need the international communities to come in and help us like Barista, did you hear his question? Mm, I'm hearing his question. I had a question, but actually, um, this uh, no, it's, it's not clear to me actually because it was actually it appears it's asking why or seeking intervention why the relevant international community or, or sovereign state have not intervened in the case of them they can uh, specific make a reference to Israel in that regard. Uh, that I may not be able to response to because um what's supposed to the legal framework we are to adopt in getting the international institutions involved in the matter uh, has been uh, explored uh, so which i said i may not be able to give uh, um, details about it so um, i may in this circumstance limit my response to the fact that we have um, uh, activated the legal framework towards um, to seek, to through which we seek, uh, we're seeking the intervention of um, relevant institutions uh, across the globe to get involved in the case before, uh, which is being spearheaded by the director of states. And so uh, I will stop at this. Thank you. 
Thank you, Mazi. Okay. Thank you. Call on the line, your name and where you are calling from. Your question, just one minute, please. My question is Good evening. Please, you have said something about the man in Finland following the insecurity in Nigeria to having the release of one leader. What has he done about uh, Is there not any legal action to take against him? And there's so many times uh, there has been a press release from uh, our head, director of state, depreciating this man from IPOD. And uh, you will still see some media bringing us together, calling him a member of the group. Is there not any legal action to be taken in case those people are under? My own, uh, apart from that, uh, what else I have to say is that if the Senate and the other government officials that are helping us in Nicola cannot help us anymore, let them come down and uh, let the people defend themselves by this. And not that you'll be there and they'll be killing people, you won't say anything. They'll be adopting people, husband and wife, children, daily, killing them, no justice, and uh, you are there collecting money trying to tell us that you are a government, that you are leading us, that you are representing us, and next election will still come out. If they cannot do anything, let them go down and let the people help themselves by ourselves. And uh, that is all because of this woman. Thank you. Hello, are you okay? Yes, Barista, go ahead. Yes, go on, Barista. Go on and answer his questions. Uh, uh, the fact is that um, uh, media, media platforms in Nigeria are referring to him as a, either a leader or a special leader of IPOB. It's all strategy. So, which uh, I had earlier elaborated upon about the conspiracy of a sort. Uh, because uh, they know who it is. And I said a few days ago, Nigerian government, uh, the military, Nigerian defense time, chief of defense staff, referred to, to the group by their name. And uh, so those who are still referring him as a member of IPOB or professional member of IPOB or whatever they call him, is purely for the chief purposes and also to serve the purpose for which they are doing it. Because what's the purpose they're doing for the what, What's the set of purpose or plan? Just to demonize that PUB as an alliance put aside, demonize that PUB before the international community and make them look like the people who are actually perpetrating the crime, when in fact the state is aware that this crime is being perpetrated by a certain person from Finland uh, who is connecting the entire thing going on in the southeast. Uh, so obviously, who is not into any form of agitation. So it's kind of a conspiracy of assets of a sort. Uh, and um, of course, you know, in the Nigerian thing goes, give uh, give the money, they will say whatever they want to say in the media. So, uh, I, I've personally, no, 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 no. so. Okay, so I, I, I said I, I personally on my own uh, uh, issue uh, written to the chief executives requesting them, requesting for the intervention. I'm stating reason why they have to intervene uh, because these are innocent Biafans, these are people that they are governing. As of today, we still have a functional government in the southeast. So you can't just close their eyes to those their processes. That goes on every day in the name of abduction of innocent Biafrans. So, and they know what to do. After all, after all, they are the they are the leaders on the ground. They know who and who are committing the crime. So, and they are all just to allow them to intervene, because you see, the point is that if you understand what is happening in the South East today, if we understand what is happening in the South East today, you understand that even you who is calling today cannot freely travel to your homeland. 
And you are not traveling because you are afraid of those security agents. No. You are afraid of because you are, you are traveling. You are, you, are, you, are, you are afraid because of even your brothers who say they are doing, they are, they are, they are stating for your, for, your, for your freedom. Some criminals in these guys. So, but the issue of security agents, reckless abduction and arrest of people, honestly, I'm here first. You know, send me a France. You know, send me a France. So we stop if, if, the, if the governors of the South is, they come take it serious. Because I want them to take it serious. We're not saying that not, they were not saying that crimes are not being committed on a daily basis by this people. After that, so day that will pass without you hearing about one incident or another that things happen in the East. Some people are doing it and they know them. They know them. So what we are asking them to do is to intervene, use their powers, the political powers to get involved. Call this. Agency to order, call the institution, the institution to order, the security agents to order. Let them direct the effort to those who are doing this. Allow the allow the efforts to go. Okay, let me give an instance. An instance. When something happened in Abba on 30th of May this year, criminals desecrated our land in Abia, in Abba. I issued a statement. I wrote, I wrote letters. And on the, on the base of the father, some people, you know, some people, including the kings, were arrested on account of that. So, and following up their letters, many people were released. The governor got involved, and and the, and the excess powers, many of them were released. I can say that for sure. So, these are things we want in other states. So, it does stop, so that once they intervene, an intervention will lead to immediate stop in profiling innocent their friends and arresting them. But let me say this thing to you. Right to self damnation is, is constitutionally guaranteed right and recognized globally. So, the, more, the most important thing depends on the way you are going about it. So, the, the fact that you are stepping for the freedom, for the liberation of our people, it's a right to the law. So, there's, there's no, no law that says you're not going to, you, can, you cannot decide this right. No. So, and the those who are hiding under the fact that they are stepping and doing committing atrocities of kind of, of, of sorts, they know them. They know them. Because these guys are not, are not, are not, are not, are not, are not are into this into the form of violation. How can you tell me? How can we say it? Can you go and raise your hand? Can you say, "Come on, come 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 and then when we were men, you see, administration it is not; it's pure criminality. It's pure criminality of all you for. They have nothing to do with administration. So, and then they have one where they know themselves. And security agents, man, you go one day, you boy, and then they okay. Look at what happened in Mosul last time. Every day, in a go on a toasty, go another one. If I tell them the man everything, I will see them. I will send them money. It's not administration. Over there, and the bro, I know those who are doing. Yes, man. This I'm calling them by their names. You want to say no, no? As a matter of fact, only a few of them are anything today. Nani, um, before the first statement you will read on paper, on the news, or even on online, the first statement you know they will release, bro. Now they are on the I don't know, separate group. No, I don't. Without investigating them, and they know those who are committing these atrocities. So what I'm, I'm watching, I'm still, I'm still begging the state government.
I'm hearing the caller very well. Why are you franchise? I'm hearing the caller very well. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, watch Nikki. Watch Nikki. Apparently, you have uh, answered the question in substance because uh, uh, by the safe in Jafar today, you still need counsel to IPOB. So, I've drawn a long line of list here, which I wanted to read out about the cases we are handling for. IPOB in many courts, which has to do with over over 200 persons who are today in custody. And in these cases, uh, this case of our 10, uh, our 10 gone deep, gone fine here in, 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 in hearing because uh, most of them have been concluded awaiting judgment. Awaiting judgment, some of them are for are for adoption. Some are for ruling, and some the trial are still going on. In some of them, and some have gone on appeal. We, uh, the, those that have gone on appeal, are those who have, who have gotten judgment before the lower court. Like uh, we have, I may not. Um, uh, if you allow me, I'll mention them. So we have about about four different cases in court of appeal today. Uh -huh. The one they file appeal, and the one the, these are matters were done against the police and the. SSS and uh, they are purely IPD cases and they will won the cases and they went on appeal. So, uh, like Commission of Police or Solomon Ludapo, uh, Commission of Police or one the one game, where is it? State Civil Services of Ibu and Stephen, Commission of Police or Guchuku, Antonio KK, State Civil Services against Chere, Anene, and a lot of them, of them. So, I may not be able to mention here. So I am actively still the lead counsel to IPB. So, but um, uh, Nam the Kano, uh, case is um, uh, it's a different thing altogether. Of course, it's a personal case being handled by the leader of the IPB. No doubt about it. They're being handled by counsel, counsel of his choice. So this one, I'm um, lead counsel to IPB, and uh, we are still defending them, and we'll still continue to defend them. Thank you.
um um despite that uh Mazi, I would just like to ask this one particular question. Please, Barista. Okay, yeah. Uh, please, just, just, it's very important. It's very important, please. Yeah. Uh, Barista, I want to know how MBA is being uh, represented. I mean, whether they have chapters or whether they're being represented by states, because sometimes I used to hear uh, MBA, um, local uh, government uh, representative or chairman or president or however they are dressed. Why I'm asking this question is because we remember in May 2022, how, um, uh, on May 22, how, some groups of lawyers about 34 a uh, group of lawyers from the north stood and they mounted defense for the suspected killers of uh, deborah and uh, that group was being led by uh, uh professor Masa ibrahim who is a lecturer in the uh, usman dafodio university this group of lawyers, they stood that the killers of Deborah must be released. Now I am asking, do we have Igbo lawyers or Southeast lawyers that can stand this way for the forceful disappearances or for the uh, uh, ethnic cleansing going on in Igbo land? Because apart from IPOB legal team, we have never heard about any other group of legal team speaking on behalf of what is going on in Igbo land today. Even when there is all this uh, selective justice, all this uh, intimidation and every other thing, we have never seen any other lawyer or group of lawyers standing for the Igbos. Are you done? Yes, Barista. Are you done? Hello? Yes, Barista, I'm done. Hello? Yes, okay, Barista, um, I'm done with my questions. Uh, yes. You know, you know, let me just, let me, let me give an overview about how this thing works. Uh, I, I, um, now, let me give an overview about how, about how, how this thing works. In 2015, when we started this case, of course, you know that many people ran away. Even when we consulted, some people didn't identify with the matter before we proceeded. However, in the course of time, some people will come, some of our brothers will come thinking there are, that there are benefits attached to appearing the matter. Some we are discouraged because they are not being, uh, nobody's paying anybody. So um, that is the, what I know that happened. Uh, he set out for payment of lawyers, and when they when they had this matter being handled on pro bono, some of them would disappear. It happened at the early stage of the case, so um, it's a personal choice. It's a matter of personal choice. After all, after all, we have many senior lawyers in in Igbo from Igbo land. We have many senior lawyers, professors, and uh, so anybody that wish to identify with this cause probably to come and defend those who are illegally arrested and detained and seek for their release. It's free to do that. But I cannot hold their brief, I cannot speak for them. It's a thing of choice. And so that someone in from the northern mobilize people to Oh, Patrick, we've really battled with the technical glitch, but I think uh, that we've won. We've won.
Yes, you are. For standing up and um, uh, making sure that our people are brought to court and for their cases to be heard, that alone is a huge uh, courage. Uh, because what the uh, security forces of the Nigerian state want to do is to continue to kidnap our people, uh, completely lock them up without giving them even single access to their right for fair hearing. And uh, this is quite uh, unfortunate, and uh, this is where. Barista, if I need your offer, have covered the gap in making sure that these cases are hard in court, and we have to appreciate that. Uh, Barista, you're welcome back to the program. We'll be rounding up this program uh, for other future engagement because we spent a quality time <coughs> over two hours, and I believe and I want to appreciate our, uh, our audience, our viewers, who have also remained steadfast with us who have uh, continued, even from the beginning of the program till now, uh, listen and drop their comment. It is commendable for them, for, uh, for their patient. Uh, now, uh, there, there was something you were trying to explain as regard to uh, the, the Nigerian Bar Association uh, position in the uh, human rights violation in Biafra land as it stands today. No, it was, it was uh, more than referred to one professor from the North who mobilized uh, lawyers from the uh, region to defend people that um, uh, that uh, killed an innocent lady. Uh, however, um, I said it's, a, it's purely, it's not being sponsored by, actually sponsored by the NDA. Um, the, it's not, it's not acts in the capacity, his capacity as a member of, as a, an official of NBA, no. It's something, he is a figure, and probably in line with their belief, mobilizing people, which can have, as well, happen in our place, <coughs> happen. And I had earlier mentioned that when we, at the early stage of this case, in 2015, some people identified with the legal team, they came in their numbers. So, but at some point, we were discouraged because they were thinking that uh, uh, an amount of money, heavy amount of money, had been set up for lawyers. So when they discovered that this matter is substantially being conducted on pro bono, and they were discouraged a lot of way. So some people can still, can still, uh, uh, and can still decide today to mobilize. MBA actually has a human rights committee, but um, it appears from every indication that that committee is not doing much. Uh -huh. And they are only involved in selected cases, per se. So, but our people can, on their own, decide to come out and mark, they, they mobilize a KT, a committee T, from our, a team from our own side, to defend the people, to defend, to assist in defending our people who are being, who are being uh, uh, arrested, who are being uh, arrested. So even in my own personal case, in my own case as a lawyer, I wrote to them, as a senior member of the bar, but I wrote to them to MBE as a body. And narrating my idea in the House of Nigeria Security Agents, what they do? How many of them were involved in my case? My case was practically done by my chambers and few friends who also uh, uh, shared the same sympathy, same sympathy with me. So I'm talking about a, a member of MBE, a senior member of MBE. So as I am, I invited them, I petitioned them, but they were not involved. So talk more of. Uh, uh, cases affecting the downtrodden. So the point is that it's a function of um, uh, personal choice. That I can say. If our people decide to mobilize lawyers to get on their own, decide so much to get involved in the matter, they can come out and they get they, they, they fight with us in doing these cases. Nobody's been the student uh, prevented from them getting involved in this matter. No. After all, there's nothing big to do. There's no big deal about it. People can get involved and assist us in doing these cases. Some of these cases. Particularly now, the are being arrested 
on a daily basis from all parts of the Southeast region. Thank you. Thank you, Barista. Well, that we have callers because we'll be rounding up this program. Well, in the well, next well, you give me, uh, we agreed for one hour, but we're not going to do four hours. But then, Barista, you, know, Barista, Barista, you have just exposed me. You have exposed me. Yes, you said one hour, but please, uh, we are rounding up. We are not taking further questions. We are just wrapping it up. And, uh, Matthew Patrick, let, just permit me to at once. Um, uh, pass my uh, parting uh, message to dear friends, to our guests, and to our viewers. So, uh, Barista, I must say a big thank you for your coming uh, to BTV to clear some of these uh, bordering uh, questions. We know, as uh, Marze Patrick uh, like, uh, rightly said before, that. Uh, uh, you can be coming uh, in subsequent times to clear so many issues because if we could allow the callers or even my own questions alone can take us uh, five hours from now. I'm not perfect, you know that. You know, I love so many questions. questions. So <laughs> I am thanking you so much for your time. And, uh, I apologize for keeping you for more than two hours after we agreed it is for one hour. You know, dear friends, love you so much. And uh, I know they, they may not even want you to go as well. You can see I'm how not, much I'm not, I'm not, you are not, coming so in. You are really loved by our people. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I love them more. Um, on a concluding note, except you have further questions to ask me. Um, otherwise, I will say a few things before we, before I visit. I've been oh, Mr. Go ahead. Go ahead. The floor is yours. Go ahead. Okay. What I want to tell you, friends, is that self-determination is a constitutionally guaranteed right, which is also a global recognized right under relevant instruments and conventions. I encourage the friends to continue in their peaceful quest and non-violent approach to their quest for this met restoration of um, of Biafra, for their own sovereign state of Biafra. So it's very clear from every indication, very clear from every indication, which we are all seeing every day, that some people we are being recruited to come and unleash all forms of havoc on our people, which is presently going on in, the, in, our, in, in our lands today. And by so doing, to justify the political prosecution of IPOB, of course, initially, they started with saying, uh, introducing themselves as spokesperson of IPOB. That one failed. They started introducing themselves as factional leader of IPOB. That one failed. At some point, they then developed a template, a platform which they are representing now. So, and holding international on it, on it. Now, let me ask the friends. We are all the Igbo. I am Chabon Dibu. Can you draw our from the depth of my heart? I am a I'm a lawyer. I know absolutely you're not one book by the moment because I obviously the sense of Vihana here and I come and care about. I talk and you would do more care. The by the man, I will not be treated fairly. That's what I buy the man. You're not doing the bad in the by him and then I'm to again and then I may have. But those who are contributing money for them can not just here wherever they are because most times I see people who are reasonable who supposed to be learned. You see what I did. It will give you some for those sitting at Biafra and Abiano of December. I want to say this thing now. Let us. Let's be on record. Or singing a Biafra and Abiyan December 28th, or not December, or November, according to their own calculation. Then, although I know 28th will come and go, they will tell you another story. And it is clear to you as an Igbo man and Igbo woman. Nobody here in Abiyan, nothing is going of something going to happen. Now, in a Jomo, you be a guy in a hotel, you be a guy in a hotel, you that person, you be a hotel. That one, where is he going to? I'm asking you a question. Now, one of any grounds of the father will have mothers, sisters, brothers, and only any of us have called but written one word or other of activities of this equal. Joe Gal, Joe Laka, Joe Mad, introspect. I Joe, I check good in a minute. I need to keep according to me. How many of us are proud enough to go back to that to know any of part of this or any 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 any, any state of uh, in, in Ibo land and move freely? And imagine how many of us are now keep an arm. But I'm a Bamoto, one Blue Moto, Gaffer Monitor, Gao Lucio Baba, Saba by Water, 
Can I not cross the other way? The pram. I already told me here, I'm going to men. I didn't make back. I didn't go back. I didn't go back. I didn't go back. I didn't go I didn't go back. I didn't go back. I didn't go back. I didn't can we go in? Can we buy your dog for them? I'm not going to go in. I'm not going to go in. I'm not going to go in. I'm Because now the point I want you to understand, Bernard, whichever way you are contributing to what is happening, whichever way you are contributing, oh, no, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, why I'm coming on. Whichever way you are contributing, in the end, oh, yeah, you can't afford it. Oh, you can't afford it. Oh, you can't afford it. That's why I had to be a doctor of form for my POV. I don't want to pass out that POV. Never don't worry, I have to be a POV. I don't want to pass out that 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 POV. I don't want to pass out as good as seven times, I will do for Simia, Madame, Madame Hana, unless not what you can never. Because I continue, I continue to speak the truth. It's only a quizoku from as a matter of fact, over an equizoku man, I'll be saying the truth because I've got no way in that team. So can't you why I have you? Whatever I need you, you never will go in a life in a natural somewhere ego, or I want to be off from a bench, not a one nature, not a man cat, or so I can say that way. In a check on a open a way spent in a south east from Monday to Sunday. Out of all the ten, out of that ten, seven on one on a way will make it now. Who no negate any trend? And I couldn't go now on a no see any open a trend and that label state. Overall, I'm not for ten. Oh, 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 reality. Oh, reality. I don't want to start saying it here. Oh, now I'm on the platform. Now they find a pull in a bag. In our reality. Can that move one moon? On a two ago, that's a Kakoria. Oh, 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 Prime Minister, oh, Gabulo, Gabulo, Prime Minister, Gabulo, Democratic. This is rubbish. So let us introspect. Do you know why I do? So thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you, Barista. And the, and the man, Sir Patrick. I can assure you that from time to time, I will be featuring your programs. I'm gonna be. And now, your presence, presence so your presence is highly needed because you need to work with the media. For our people to have a clear picture of the job you are doing. And there is something I said earlier. The criminality that is happening in our land today did not come to so many of us as a surprise. And I say I cited an instance of 2017. After the Operation Python dance, the Mazinam the Kano managed to escape. There was this scenario that was painted with a group of individuals who came, we dressed up in black and red, tied their red, this thing, whatever on their head, and somebody covered his face with the same stature of Mazin Nam the Kano and everything, trying to speak like Mazin Nam the Kano in that video, trying to um, address Biafrance in that video, and threatening the Nigerian state at that time. Say, talking about how he's going to kidnap uh, Buhari at that time, a lot of things were said. Now, we, we were in the media, we were able to dissect that video, and we knew that that individual or that personality was not Mazin Nam the Kano. They tried to mimic Mazin Nam, they tried to paint a picture of Mazin Nam the Kano covering his face, to, you know, threaten Nigerian government. So when you look at the scenario of 2017 of Mazin Namdekanu, uh, Operation Python that escape and the present uh, uh, situation of his abduction from Kenya and, uh, and um, uh, a sudden rendition back to Nigeria, you can put all these <laughs> scenarios together to understand that there have been a very long time uh, you know, effort in making sure that IPOB is criminalized. And that is the reason it was so fast for them to be able to concord a court judgment to make IPOB uh, to uh, uh, blackmail and blacklist IPOB and, uh, you know, um, what is the right word by making IPOB 
uh, 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 proscription of IPOB. You, this proscription of IPOB and all the things that have happened from then till now have been the effort and the program because that is the only way they can IPOB can be discredited. Uh, the, the, every effort has been put in place to see how to discredit IPOB. And they understand that the only and the easiest way to do that is by infiltrating and criminalizing the organization. By so doing, uh, it becomes very, very difficult and impossible for IPOB to have access and communication with the global community. You know, so it is a common sense thing, Barry. Uh, so for me, uh, many of us understand because we are also able to uh, also uh, go back in history of how the Nigerian government also put on the Biafra uniform to terrorize our uh, people in the riverine areas during the war. You know, so this has been a strategy for years. And, you know, so when you see some of the criminalities going on today, uh, for many people who understand can relate. They can not everybody can relate. A lot of people will be carried away believing that some people came to fight for Biafra. But don't forget that some people also wore Biafra uniform to terrorize our people in the River Rhine area, creating that uh, discontent, making them believe that Biafra soldiers came to, to, to attack our, our people in the River Rhine area. So these are the scenarios that should be put in place. That when you see certain things happening, it is no longer a news because they have happened in the past, but your ability to put one on and two together can only give you three. So, Barrister Jaffa, we want to say thank you very much for your presence in this program. And uh, like you've assured us, we would like to continue to have you as regular as often to give us update of the situation of our brothers who are illegally detained because it is very, very important for us and for Biafrans in general. And also to also give Biafra the confidence that they have a representation, a legal representation that is worth uh, the onions. Because as far as I'm concerned, you have been able to prove yourself in the test of time. We want to say thank you all for being part of the program. And until we see you guys again, our viewers and uh, followers and Biafra all over the world, I want to say thank you very much for uh, staying with us till this moment. Two and two hours and thirty minutes past. I also want to say sorry, Barrister Joffa. Apologies to you for right, taking no uh, this long time. Uh, but right. it, is what, it is worth it. We want to say thank you very much. And until we meet again, it has been Mazi Patrick Ikem and Wada. Jovi, sir, Chichi. Thank you. Yeah, very much. And have a wonderful Sunday. Thank you so much God for having me. God bless you. Thank, thank you very thank much. You. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.